Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separated. Man, we got my boy in the building, Mr. Donald Will himself, you know, in the flesh, man. How you doing? Man, I'm great, man. I can't complain, man. You know, and um, this is my first virtual podcast, so, you know, Dollar Will told me he was going to help me make it magnanimous. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, man, shout out to you, man. And um, thank you, man, for coming to the show. And um, I was on Dollar Will's show, and um, we had mm -hmm. a great conversation, you know. And uh, and here we go again, you know, linking up again, you know, getting you guys some more game, getting you guys just, you know, just just so dealing with social issues and um just some things about your history that you need to know. You know, everybody needs to know their history. In order to know where you're going, you have to know where you come from. You know, so me and Dollar Will want to kind of politic with you guys today and uh, just, um, you know, teach you guys how important it is to know your history. You know, and we got one of the one of the gurus who's a, who's a teacher of it today. Mm -hmm you know, in the studio with me, you know, this man is, is a real prolific history teacher, you know. <laughs> so, man, go on and introduce yourself for the people. Hey, everybody. My name is Dollar Will, but my real name is William Brown. I'm 35 years old. I'm from the city of Saginaw, Michigan. And I'm the CEO of the 1804 show with over 350 episodes on the show period and over 80 episodes of the history segments mm. man so how was it man you oh, first of all i want to ask how, how did you come up with the name 1804 oh man um shoot at first i just didn't know what the show was going to be called and i wanted to be different you know i wanted it to be authentic mm -hmm. i wanted it to be like a movement so one of my OGs gave me the greatest advice. Like, don't put your name on your business. Don't put your face on it. Because you want to have a movement. You want to have something that people will follow you and people will take you serious and want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I was watching the 1804 History of Haiti by Tariq Nasheed. And I never saw or heard about that story. And right. It just inspired me to seeing men, women, and children fighting for their independence together. Because usually mm. with slave rebellions, it was just men. So to have women and children included, and they didn't have no guns, they just used um, martial arts, the deadly plants, snakes, rocks, a little bit of everything to conquer and take over the independence for 200 years. So that inspired me, man. and. I was like, yeah, that's that's it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's it. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know what I'm saying? Because you can steady go deeper and deeper with history. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it just take you back to a space, man, and time as to where, you know, it's, 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 it's sad, you know, how some of the things that has happened to it, you know? And I think about... Um, I think about uh what was her name on the Tupac movie uh that wrote the uh the bird case the the bird the, the bird case sings. Oh uh, Maya Angelo. Maya Angelo. Yeah, and and with, with with Maya Angelo in her book, man, she talked about how she was seeing how babies, man, was how you know how the slave owners and, and things of the nature was taking babies, man, and slamming the babies up against the tree. Because mm -hmm. enough, you know, because no more slaves could get on the ship, you know. Right. And man, that was just that was just like one of the most horrendous things I've ever really like heard in my life. You know that you would take a life, man, and just take a a, a a newborn baby, man, and just slam a newborn baby into the tree like that, you know. So oh, like I said, yeah. Yeah. right. The more in depth, man, that you know our history, it gives us purpose. And I see that it, had gave, it has given you a lot of purpose. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt. And then yeah, all, I, I, also, man, also, I don't know if you knew, but they also used us to hunt alligators. They were using black infants to um, hunt alligators, and they would use black babies as the bait to capture huh. these alligators as well. So it's a lot of 
horrific <laughs> stories that people was unaware of. And that's where my job comes in. Because to be honest with you, man, I don't really like to tell these stories because you have to have strength to be able to deliver it in a way of grace. You know, uh-huh. to turn a painful story into a reminder of how far we came and how undefeated that we are as a people because we had a little bit of everything that was targeted to destroy us, but we still prospering, we still going, we still growing, and Mm -hmm. we are the best of the best. Right. We are. And this is a beautiful time for Black people. You know, this this time right here, we haven't had this many entrepreneurial entrepreneurs in the black community we haven't had right. this many multi-millionaires you know black people has never had this much success as we are having right now you know it's just a great time to be black and it's just a great time and a great era for us you know and i understand you know it's a lot of bad things going on in the world you know what i'm saying a lot of chaotic thing you know but right. in the same sense it's a it's a it's a good time for us in the black community as well yeah, yeah, because it's important that we establish entrepreneurship, ownership, love, pride within ourselves. Because if we don't have any of those things, then all of this wouldn't have been for nothing. Mm-hmm. And I know that, you know, when you started the 1804 show, you know, um, your friend gave you some advice and told you that you needed to, you know, teach history again you know, confabulate about history, you yeah. know, and, you know, it takes a lot of content to keep these podcasts going. And you have to have a, 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 a certain thing that you pivot in on, you know? And, right, and, right. Yeah, and, and, and your pivot was history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just want you to explain to the viewers out there, what's your mission with the 1804 show and what's your mission with getting um, the history out there to the people, man, and teaching these historical lessons, man, that's that's valuable in our, and in in, especially in the black community. Oh, uh, well, to be honest with you, bro, like my main mission is just to educate, man, because uh-huh. we just have this, this thing of, you know, being arrogant, being cocky, you know, instead of uh-huh. being humble. And I just wanted to just keep people informed that uh people died in order for us to to do the things that we can do and have a voice that have um the sense of self or knowledge of self so it's just really important that we pay homage to the people that died for us and just make sure that they therefore wasn't in vain and that's the the main goal but as far as the history goes it's just um being aware of how you know great you are and your how your bloodline is because there's people in our families that participated in a civil rights movement or participated in a war or participated in fight for injustice you know what I'm saying so we just have to make sure that we keep those people that don't names a lie about us because they were thinking about yeah because they were thinking about us you know what i'm saying before we was even thought of and then that's what i do you know that's why i'm so passionate about what i do is nobody really is giving us knowledge like that especially off the, the, the strength of free you know people want to get paid and and be compensated for what they know you know what i'm saying for the blueprints but i'm giving it for free because i care right. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, people like you are an anomaly, man. People like you, you rare. <laughs> you know, Thank with you. your podcast, you know, you, you know, every, every podcast have a different thing, you know, has a different um, aspect of the, of the movement that they push in. And I really admire yours because like I say, in order for us to know where we going, we got to know where we came from. Like when I started learning my history, you know, start reading the slaughterhouse cases, the uh, the Dred Scott case, Plexi versus Ferguson, the Board of Education versus Brown. Um, when I started reading them cases, man, it started 
it started helping me to identify with who I was. You know, mm -hmm. it started it started giving me clarity on who I was as a as a as a as a as a black human being. You know, and that's when my life started out with purpose. You know, and I think that your show is so unique, man. And you know, we need people like you to teach history, man, because it's like it's it's it has become you know oblivious now, you know, especially yeah. since especially since we don't have books anymore. It's just all um, everything is put on 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 you know digital now. Everything has went digital. They didn't even got rid of the case law books now. You know, now you got to right. go on Lexus Nexus and Lexus Advanced, Lexus Advanced. You know, so the history is slowly but surely uh, is fading away. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and and a lot of people is not being directed towards it like you doing with your podcast. You know, it's directing people to where we once were, you know, and where we are now. You know, and mm -hmm. you being able to cover that middle ground of where we should be going. You know, um, I just want to ask you, man, if you could, if, if you had the opportunity to paint a picture of what our black society should look like, how would that picture look? Um, I would say, you know, we got to get rid of the ones who are going to, to portray us first. You know, because people don't like, because some of my shows and some of my episodes, man, I hold us accountable as well. Because we need to be held accountable too, because how else are we going to fix the problem if we don't acknowledge who causing the problems as well? Mm -hmm. And I believe just with, you know, you call out the ones who doing the, the gang violence or the ones who's selling drugs or the ones who's um not keeping the area well kept you know you give them on automatic meter you get your ish together or you out because we can't uh -huh. afford to have people who's you know keeping things detrimental into our communities because we have to live here you know what i'm saying we have uh -huh. to coexist you know how else this is going to work and how else is this going to pretty much coincide with the goals and stuff like that for the future generations because we're the new ogs now so we have to dictate what goes on and who stays and who has to leave and uh -huh. stuff like that because you know i don't mind um you know pe people come together but we come together for the wrong things we come together for more negativity than positivity right and once yeah. we Get our priorities straight then we will be good we will be straight you know what i'm saying it's just this victimhood that a lot of our people um hold on instead of using it as strength as inspiration we use it mm -hmm. to make excuses and that's where the, the situation um lies is it's the trauma that we haven't um I, I would say that we never had healed from you know we exhibited it but as far as trying to you know work through it we haven't got there yet but slowly but surely man it's all coming together you know we got people like me and you and others mm -hmm. who's tired of seeing the same things and and having to like live through um the cracks and the crevices and stuff but we are making the world a better place but everybody isn't going to wake up at the same time but that's cool yeah that's where we come in that's what we right and you know mm -hmm. i like 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 i say i think that as a black community if everybody because we all a chain we are links in a chain and long as right. we and long as we um play our <clears throat> part do what we supposed to do we can build a bigger and stronger chain you know, everybody mm -hmm. has a responsibility in the community, you know, mm -hmm. and that's to help build it up, help make it better, help to improve it some type of way, whether it's picking up some trash off the ground, whether it's talking to a little kid that's playing basketball down the street, whether it's, you know, uh, going over, uh, uh, cutting your neighbor's grass sometime, going snow blowing the, 
the 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 walkway or whatever just helping build up that area right where you at right there in your own in your own community right there in your own neighborhood you know because you know i understand what you're saying is that you know we got to start uh cleaning up a lot of things that's going on a lot of a lot of a lot of malignant things that's going on in society yeah because because yeah. um we, we we can't afford to go to jail no more you know how mm -hmm. they went to jail and stuff like that freely yeah and stuff, and those protests yeah. <laughs> people like us, yeah. People, well, people like us, we we know good in jail. You know, we need to stay right. out here and, and, and yeah. drop these jails. You never been to jail before? Hell no, I I refuse, <laughs> bro. I can't. So you gotta I, clean, I, right? I, I ain't cut. Yeah, I, I yeah, I ain't cut like that, bro. And, and I'm yeah. sorry to say that. I don't <laughs> care what up, people man. say. I don't give a fuck. So it's what been a smooth say. ride for you your whole life, man. That's good, yeah. man. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, That's man. Because everybody can't. You don't ever want to go there either. No, hell no. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm too smart, you know. Otherwise, yeah. like, if I go to jail, it's, it's it gotta be something that I ain't do. I gotta be right. framed in order to right. go because I, I, I don't put myself in those positions or right. situations. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of structure, man. I see you. You very, you very disciplined. You know, I, when I watch you, you know, you got a lot of structure. You real organized. You know, where did that, where did that, where did those characteristics come from? Like, where did you pick that up from? Oh, man, just, just with time, man. Um, Cause I always, even like, if you ever been to my house, like you would not expect a man to live here. Cause everything so organized, like for my it's shoes. Neat. Yeah, it's just neat and like nothing's all over the place and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's insane, like just the, People who went over my house and ever did an interview, they're like, "Man, it's so cozy in here, man." It's, it's so cozy in. Yeah, so I always been like that. So when it comes to my business or it comes to the show, I just make sure that I um on top of things and and I take my research very seriously because I know a lot of people like to you know try to debate more than just mm -hmm. trying to get, get the message and right. And I always got to be on point with my facts and my right. um, sources. And I right. hate that because why can't you just, right. you know, receive the damn message? Why it always got to right. be a theory to what I'm saying? And I'm giving y'all the game. I'm giving y'all the story in the best of my abilities. But, you know, if you don't like what I do or don't like what I say, start your own platform and see people watch and listen. People listen to me. I'm and that's what I tell them too. That's what I tell them too, man. A lot of people, you know, they want to tell you to do your stuff stuff this way and tell you how to do your brand that way. And mm -hmm. it, it, it goes, you know, to piggyback off what you were saying, I tell people too, you know, you could just easily start a podcast. All you got to do is take your phone and point it to your face. <laughs> you know, right. you ain't got to tell me how to run mine. Yeah, and it's... And I also wanted to say this, bro, because it be very, it's very dangerous to take everybody's advice. Only listen to people that's somebody has done something. But mm. if a person been a cashier all their life, they ain't no position to tell you how to run a podcast or be tell you anything movie. about journalism. Yeah, exactly, because they settled. You know what I'm saying? You gotta mm -hmm. really be careful of the people that settled with their lives, because we all mm -hmm. have the same 24 hours so i just utilize mine's better a lot of people don't even still think i have a job i work a full-time job and i still come home and apply that same amount of time that eight hour shift i have a 12 hour shift on my business or my show so i don't take no days off you know what i'm saying i'm grinding all day every day that's why i was able to flourish so how do you that balance do. that man balance your business uh, a uh, 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 40 hour week job and mm -hmm. manage your life at the same time, you know, with your family and things of that nature, man. How do you, how do you, how you balance that out? Man, just thinking about how much time I wasted when I was in that dark place in my life. And I realized that I can't waste no more time because mm -hmm. when I began on that on journey, I was 27 years old. When I got out of it, I was 33 years old. So 
I just think about those six years that I was um, confined in my mind to the uh, point that I'm not going to allow that to happen again. Because if I would have started the 1804 show back in 2015 or 2016, there's no um, period that I, I probably would have been like so beyond where I'm at today. But I'll beat myself up about it. I just think about it. I leave it alone, but then I learn from that, and then I just keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? It's all about mm -hmm. keeping it pushing. Yeah. So you say, let you say that dark place that you was in. Let's mm -hmm. let's how, how paint a picture for us of what what that dark place looked like for you. Oh man, I don't know if you're familiar with Mortal Kombat, but it was like I know about Mortal Kombat. <laughs> well, it was like being a. <laughs> It was like being in the Nella realm and our world at the same time. So it was kind of like I was in Dante's Inferno or just in Hades, you know, that the gates, you know, just um, trying to get, just get out, you know, trying to fight these demons that I had, you know. And when you go through depression and stuff like that, you put yourself at, um, you know, like I would say you put yourself just with anybody, because you allow anybody to come get next to you because you're vulnerable, because you're alone, mm -hmm. you you feel empty, you know, you don't have no will to fight. But mm -hmm. it just was like those things, because I let a lot of the wrong people get next to me. I confided in the wrong people. So they was pretty much around me so they can find out my weaknesses and use it against me later. Like, wow. Um, and it was really hurtful because when you have a big heart, you think everybody else have a big heart too, but it doesn't mm. work like that. You know, right, you're not, right, everybody right, ain't yeah. built like you are. Right, right, right. 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 You know, so face, right. You, so got, you got a lot, lot of, of, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. faced a lot of disappointments, but right. my come up, it was worth it, you know, cause right. it's never too late to reinvent yourself. Yeah. And so what was some of the what was some of the characteristics that you you know because I know you got to implement endurance when you you know you climbing out of, of an impoverished mind state especially when yeah. it's dealing with any type of trauma you know any type of depression you know what I'm saying like what was one of the characteristics man that you use outside of your endurance man to get you back to that happy place Oh man just work ethic bro just because mm -hmm. work ethic takes you far and having something to focus on yeah because because the outlet is really important because it was this interview i watched with dr dre when he was talking about his brother and he was just talking about how when it comes to death you never out of that space you just find ways to deal with it and i gotta get up and pick my myself up and because i still have people around here that needs me and having an outlet lit or you know going to the studio is you know creating and, and it just takes your mind out of them dark areas and that's and i say it. right and i said you know you know because i just you know my auntie just died we did her we just had her funeral yesterday shout out to my auntie vera woods um yeah sorry and, to hear that bro man thank you and mm -hmm. you know i tell people about death as to where you know let it be some type of fire up under you let it be mm -hmm. impactful as to where you can use this death in a positive and productive way because i know how a lot of people you know they be depressed behind their mom dying their dad dying their sister brother you know family member loved one or mate a uh, 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 wife husband you know mm -hmm. and sometimes when you get in those depressed states you know you will follow up behind that person you know and you know and lead this earth as well. So I try to tell people when a person, a loved one of yours has died, you know, you got to take that and use that as ambition to shoot mm -hmm. for your dreams. You know, yeah. if, you, you know, whatever Carla May did before she died, you, you Carla May's kitchen, uh, we want to take, you know, some t-shirts and put Carla May name on there, whatever she stood for. You know, so I just think with Deaf Man that you know, and, and, and it's so easy, man, to, 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 to linger on it for years and years and years at a time. 
to where it do have you depressed. You know, so yeah. how important, man, is, is it, man, to not allow death to emotionally impact you in a negative way, but to take that death as, 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 as a tool to be able to push you that much farther? Whew, man, I, I, when I tell you that it wasn't an overnight thing, because it really wasn't, mm. and I was battling guilt. The guilt haunted me more than the actual death of my brother. And my oldest brother, especially like when you look like the person that's gone, it hurts, you know? So it's just like, it's teasing you in your face. Like, cause this man is in the grave, you know? But you see his face still, and right, it, it was tough. Right. You know, that was, was your only sister. One of the hardest things. No, I have a sister. Um, I have a sister, and I have a half, half brother. But okay. I literally watch. My, but I literally like watch my family break up in front of my eyes, and and it's like the pain of watching your mother bury her child, her firstborn child, man. It, it would never escape my mind you know i will always live with that but i take my brother's death and i talk about it to people every time i do my show it's my brother's um battle cry you know i finish where he left off and stuff like that and, and, he, and he was a big inspiration in my life as far as how i dress how i just interpret things and my music taste because my brother introduced me to a lot of things and stuff uh -huh. like that and we was like 13 years apart so he was smart he was funny my sense of humor pretty much is like my brother because he was so petty it's like right, he had right, no chill right. man <laughs> right so i just wish that you know he was here in the physical to see right. All the good things and all the great things but he's watching you know so he came to my dreams a lot you know to tell me that you know i'm watching you i'm protecting you you're safe i'm safe don't worry about me continue on with your life and that's what i've been doing and once you come to a acceptance period of okay this person is gone but they're not going to be forgotten because i'm gonna make sure that they legacy lives on through my work or do my business or do right. my fellowship with people so that's what i do right and man you know me and you got you know we got similar lives because you know i got a brother i got you know i got a brother man he got killed you know mm -hmm. um in 05 you know and he was like man he was like my protector man everywhere we go he didn't want nobody touching me, man. He didn't want nobody walking up on me. He was kind of like my <laughs> security, man. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, man. He was overprotective of me, man. And um, you know, man, just being able, man, getting that call, man. You know, we was we was together right before he died. Um, an hour before he died, you know, me, him, and my cousin, and my uncle. You know, an hour later, I had got that call. You know that that he was killed. You know, and it and it it hit me hard, man. It, it it really hurt it, man, because we was actually in the process of just not getting to know each other. You know, yeah. he had been in prison, I had been in prison, you know, our daddy never had us together. And we was in that process, man, of of getting acquainted with each other, man, getting the feel of each other, and in that process, man, he died. And it was like you know, I, I I carry his name, man, on me, man. You know, I, I use his death as an impact, man, to try to help, you know, uh, better some things in society and just help me to be a better me. You know, man, yeah. you know. And and like I say, he my, he my little angel as well, man, looking down on us. So, you know, we got two brothers up there, man, that's, that's our angels, man. That's that's taking good care of good care of us up there. I think, you know, oh, yeah, no seeing what no we doubt. are today and and the, and the things that we doing today, man. I think they doing a good job of, of taking care of us. Oh yeah, man, for sure, man. And and it's 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 crazy because even though I'm 35 now, like I I still be needing my big brother advice sometimes and. 
just what he would have done in this situation because a lot of times I get myself in trouble because I don't have his guidance. You know, I don't have guidance from a male point of view sometimes. So I get myself into a lot of stuff, but I'm human at the end of the right. day. I just explain to people like I still have my trials and tribulations like everybody else, but, you know, cut me some slack that I'm trying, you know, that I'm not invincible, I'm not indestructible, I'm still human, like everybody else, and, you know, I, I still got to go home and, you know, deal with my things and deal with my circumstances, but it just, everybody see me as this strong, powerful individual that they don't see or they didn't know about the moment when I was broken or when I was damaged or I felt hopeless and stuff like that. But I know now that I'm here for a reason because it didn't take me out. It only made me stronger. It made me determined to come back even harder and stronger and more relentless to a lot mm. of things. <laughs> and you and you you real I love that that I love that assertiveness about you. You know, mm -hmm. I watch your post, man, and, and, and I love that that confidence. And I love that assertiveness that you had. Was those those characteristics that you learned and helping you overcome, you know, that dark place that you was in? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, it helped you to gain that? Yeah, because I had so many people that enjoyed when I was in when I was in pain. And it's hard to believe um, when you like in that position or when you in that mode. It's people that you love, enjoy seeing you rot and stuff like that. Because everybody isn't happy for you. Everybody isn't supporting. Rooting everybody for you, yeah. Yeah, rooting for you. So you really get to see people's true colors. And I used the movie Pleasantville in a um, different analogy because in the movie Pleasantville, it started off as black and white. And then when the colors came, people was getting upset that the uh, they was, I guess the colors represented um, people's true colors because everything was so perfect and pleasant in the beginning. But once the colors came, it wasn't cool anymore. It was more like um, like you becoming a problem or you a rebel and this and that. And it was, it was about these teenagers this whole time. But, but that's how I always portray my life was when I finally saw people true colors. You know, everything wasn't so pleasant anymore, but I adapted to it all and stuff uh -huh. like that. And I walk in a sense of a pride now because I love myself because I was chosen uh -huh. to go through uh -huh. all of that. And when people come to me with their pity parties and stuff like that, you know, I'll be like, man, you ain't got it bad. You know, you think that you're going right. through hell, you ain't walked in my shoes. You don't know what it's like to be counted out or to be betrayed for real. Like you think you know, but you have no idea. So, you know what I'm saying? Pick yourself up and and, and, and just do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm always yeah. encouraging people, yeah. always encouraging people to go after their dreams and go after what makes them happy because shit, this life shit happens so quick, man. Like. Because just yesterday, I was just looking in my mirror at age 30. Now I'm 35, so shit, I just feel like, damn, like, I got to do something now. You know, I got to go all out now before I'm 40 and still singing the same song. And that ain't going to happen to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, man, it's right now when you got to get things done. You know what I'm saying? And it's no time to wait because, you know, and, and like I say, people checking out this world so quickly now at an expedited rate, you know, and I tell people, don't sit and wait, you know, to get that business done or or whatever that dream or goal is you're trying to accomplish. Go on and start today, because the longer mm -hmm. you wait, you might not get it done. And not only that, timing is everything, man. Yeah. You know, just think if you wouldn't have started the 1804 show when you started it and you was just starting it this year or something. You know, think about all the work you will have to put in from now until, you know, from, you know, um, versus the work that you didn't already put in. You got 300 and some odd shows, man. That, that's a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Those, that, you, that's a lot of shows, <laughs> man. You know, so I want you, I wanted you to just explain to the viewers how important is timing, man, when you're trying to get something done and you're trying to go after that dream or that goal. Well, timing is definitely everything. And it was crazy because, like, when I first started the show, it was really nothing like – um. It really wasn't no like platforms or media around here when I first started it. So I was just like, like dang, like, cause I watch a lot of these um, major podcasts and stuff like that. I'm like, dang, like, why we don't have anything like that here? So I wanted to just, you know, bring something to the city of Saginaw and just really, um, you know, showcase our best and our brightest, and because. Uh -huh. Because we are like, they say we one of the most violent, dangerous cities in America. But it's greatness here too, you know. And I didn't want to like um, just be like everybody else and just give up on my city and stuff like that. Because we have some gifted, talented people here. And yeah, we do. And it and it was a a pleasure to have the people that came on the show or people who approached me out in the street was like, oh, snap, man. You know, you do that show, huh? And like, man, you're doing a great job, man. Keep it up. Don't give up and stuff like that. You know, that feels good when you put in your all and your 150% into your work and you get congratulated by people that you never seen before or don't even have a social media. But it was just one of those things that it, it had to be done. So when I tell people about timing, is you got to make sure that this is something that you want to do. You know, don't do it for clout because it ain't going to last long. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because it makes you happy, it makes you feel good. And then, you know, once you get some time in, then you're going to always reinvent yourself. You're always going to um, upgrade it because this is your brand. This is your, like, your child. So that's how I always looked at this show was it can get bigger. It can grow. It can um you know what I'm saying? Go national. So I've been national. You know what I'm saying? I started local and I took it upon myself to, you know, go, talk to people from the South, talk to people on the West Coast, talk to people on the East Coast, talk to people in the Midwest. You know, where we, where we at right now? But it just, I never thought it was going to just happen the way that it did. You know, that right. people was going to accept me like that. But I was happy that um everything that i accomplished because i even go back and watch my old episodes and just be like stoked like damn i did this like by myself. <laughs> right <laughs> you know? damn you know but right but at the end of the day bro i'm not comfortable i'm not satisfied so i know that i can do more and i can have a more accolades and stuff like that under my belt but it's just all about you know, just believing in yourself and just proving to yourself that you can do it because nobody can stop you but you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, to do what you're doing, you know, to adjust the different people's personalities, to be able to adapt to other people's personalities, you got to be a people person yourself. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, with you being in journalism, like, how did, where did you get people person skills at to go out there and bag those interviews and, you know, to uh, influence people to be on your show? Like, how did you, how did you, how did you come up with those, you know, people skills, man, to be able to just, like I said, go out there and harmonize with people, man, and, uh, and, and bring them to the show? Oh, man. Um, to be honest with you, bro, it started from being a ladies man. You know, you when you a ladies man, you got to have that. That yeah. Talk, you know. So yeah. You, gotta <laughs> you have do. That, that charisma, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I just apply that into, you know, talking to people, you know what I'm saying? Just having a level of persuasion, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm so and so. I would like to bring you on my platform. Here's my channel. You know, give it a look, give it a view. Now, if you want to be a part of it, then let me know. And if not, you know, it was a pleasure. But mm -hmm. I got more yeses than I ever got no's because right. people 
was like, dang, like you got this shit together. Like you got a playlist, you got this, you got um that, and and it was it, and it was cool because you know I had interviewed people that I watched on TV or heard on the radio and stuff like that. So I just never would have thought that they would know who I am or ever cross paths with me in a way. So it was just a blessing, and I don't ever take nothing from God because this was all God's plan but I was just grateful that God opened the doors for me and then I let myself in and I showcased what I can do and mm -hmm. and that's what it's about is showcasing what you can do because blessings and opportunities gonna come every day but a lot of people have those doubts within themselves like oh I don't think I can do it am I good enough yes you are good enough you know mm -hmm. if you got this far then what else and where else you can go, you know, what else can happen? So that's what I do. Uh -huh. But I wanted to, um, you know what I'm saying, say something else. It's not school, bro. Huh? Yeah, I wanted to say something else if, if, if that's cool. Go ahead. You know, just, um, you know, just do just doing the show, bro. Like, it just gave me a newfound redemption. Because even though I didn't have to redeem myself to people, I had to redeem myself to myself. And you, when you have to go through certain things and go through a whole lot of adversities, because you know they've been trying to destroy me since I was in my mother's womb. They've been trying to destroy me before. I became a adolescent before I came in, an adult. So just to be a kid and be told that you're different, that you have autism and that you have this and that, I never believed that shit. You know, I just felt like it was just a label, but I had to fight for my place in society and yeah. just to be able to be taken serious and stuff like that. You know, all this came from just mentors it came from sacrifice devotion and just telling myself that you know of course you don't fit in because you're not supposed to fit in you know mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it just be you you know what i'm saying it, it was i i realized that then everything started to open up for me everything started to hit you know what I'm saying? everything um was a test to see right. if I was able to to um, make it on top of the mountain. And I feel like I'm one of the pioneers. You a pioneer. Um, my homeboy, um, Thaw Magazine, fresh talk. you know, Jeremy is a fresh pioneer. Talk. You know? Yeah, Fresh Talk, everybody is, is a pioneer in their own way. And uh, I learned so much from everybody, you know what I'm saying? We all are like super friends you know we all and are, shout out pdfa show mike 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 down good show oh yeah 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 just all of us man because we all bring something to the plate you know we all you know our black men just trying to strive and trying to you know go you know what i say i say william is that you know you can't let society force a roll up on you you know and like right. and, and I, listening to you with what you were saying about how you fought to get to where you at, you know, and, and that's what we need back in people, that fight to get to where they want to be in life. You know what I'm saying? Instead of let, allowing society to just throw you around here, get over here in this uh, minimum wage job here, get over here on section eight here, get over here on, on, on welfare, you know, and we get comfortable in these situations and we never take advantage of any situation of our own to build and create our own identity in this society. And that's why we have so many weak links in this chain, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and I just want to shout you out, man. Shout out to you, man, for, you know, fighting against the narrative, you know what I'm saying? And fighting against society, throwing a role up on you and you created your own role in society. And, and that's what and that's what we need. We need more of that. Yeah. Instead of 
Oh, put me on, bro, man. Come on, man. Let me like, no. Nah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to create your own path. Exactly. Because I didn't have no help. I didn't have no team. I didn't have really anybody. It was just like my work did my talking for me. My mm -hmm. um, episode spoke for me, you know, mm -hmm. and we need that. We need people who are self determined to become yeah. somebody without. Yeah any um, um advertising you know and exactly. just and we just had to make sure that you know we teach these kids that because nowadays mm -hmm. you know there's no really nobody preparing them for what's really out here because mm -hmm. you know high school was cool but then the real school happened when you was out of school it's, it's yeah and life going to do and just knowing what you were going to bring to the table as far as the table of life you know and right. i brought my table to life just with having to be homeless for a while and right. bouncing from place to place and traveling uh to different cities and states and stuff like that um i was a drifter for a minute but um out of those years i feel like those was the best times because it gave me clarity it gave me mm -hmm. the sense of i'm not alone i'm not it helps you find myself. who you are. Helps you find yeah. yourself. And those things can't be purchased at no store or no website. It, it's it's experience. It's right. hands on. Experience. You know so <laughs> right. So man, did you ever think though? You know those history lessons that you was learning, man. That passion for history, man. That you have that's so embedded in your heart, man. Did you think it would ever? be used in this fashion because you know um i asked this question is because you know um in mastery robert green mastery is say take advantage of all information that's in front of you it because you don't know when that information can be utilized like like and i said i read a lot um i've been reading like a lot 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 uh for like the last past mm -hmm. 10 years and i never knew where this information would take me i never knew where this knowledge and this wisdom that i was acquiring would take me i never thought that i'd be sitting <laughs> in these shoes that i'm sitting in now but <laughs> me obtaining me. that knowledge man obtaining that knowledge and acquiring that knowledge man and to be able to place it in my podcast man it, 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 it's just a real festive, it's just a real elated feeling. And I know before your podcast, you was already studying history. You was already educating yourself to it. Did you think yeah. them history lessons will lead you to, did you think them history lessons will lead you to where you at now and you being a history teacher? You know, did you think it, it would ever lead you to where you at now? Um... I feel like it was going to lead me down to a a great path, but not in this format, to be honest with you. I didn't think I was going to be like on camera every week explaining it and telling these stories to complete strangers. But I think that it was going to make me become a better person anyway, because if anything, um, that's why they didn't want us reading in the first place. Because if they would have gave us one book, they probably we probably would have realized that we were slaves uh, from jump. You know, and what, what was exactly. going on? Like, hey, wait a minute, because you know, people who right. you know born into slavery, this is all they know. You know what I'm saying? But the ones who was once had a good life, or once was a like a a chief or a warrior, and this and that, and they was captured and became a slave then they would know that this is bullshit they know that this is wrong you know what i'm saying so that's what um i feel like because these history segments is really um like my fuel you know it gives me just the the um epiphany of knowing that you can go far just with knowing that this person did this and this um lady did that but at the end of the day it's like what you gonna do you know what I'm saying how are you going to make your contribution to the cause and right i'm making my contribution to the cause every night or just every week mm -hmm. just by 
you know, sharing these stories, you know, it, and it's hard to really tell these stories, man, because a lot of stories made me shed tears because I'm uh-huh. like, damn, yeah. like, how, like, how the hell Rosewood Massacre wasn't in my history book or Black Wall Street right. wasn't in my history book or exactly. Red Summer of 1919 right. wasn't in my history book. Right. But George Washington and Abraham Lincoln mm-hmm. and all these Columbus, other, Christopher Columbus and all this, exactly. yeah, all, all, right, right, right. It, it, you know, like I tell all people, these, you know, all we, these gotta people who, we gotta just relearn. You know, go back, study your history yeah. and learn it. You know, and um, I had Mr. Wilson on the show the other day, man. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, you are not put here to exist. You are not put here to exist and move on. You put here to make a difference. You yeah. know, you know, and that, and, that, and that goes to what you was just saying, you know, about everybody just, you know, uh, everybody playing their own, you know, having their own role and fulfilling their own role in society. You know, exactly. Yeah. So, man, before we get out of here, you know, the name of my show, I mean, the theme of my show is um, we better together and separated. Let me get some of your thoughts on that. Man, because we are, bro. Like, because if anything, we all we got. Like, if we um, stop competing, if we stop coming at each other and just build and love and protect and just secure the bag, and the bag is peace, and the bag is love, the bag is resources, then we would take this over. You know, I'm not your enemy. I'm your brother, or I'm your 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 godson, or your grandson, mm. or I'm your right. another son mm-hmm. of you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Look look at me as I'm part of you because we all are one. So if we all grasp that concept, then we'll be all right. I haven't given up mm-hmm. on our race of people yet. I would never give up. I love my people. I love what I, I am and who I am. So if we are got on the same page, then it would be great. Exactly. You know, so before we get out of here, man, I just want to tell everybody, man, I just want to thank William Brown, you know, for coming to the, Donald Will, coming to the show, man. Um, check his show out, <laughs> 1804 show. I wanted to say, yeah, Will, you, you know, um, because you got, you got, you got a, you got a, um, you got a hell of a redemption story, man. You know what I'm saying? You got a hell of a yeah, comeback. Thank you, bro. You know, and a lot of people, man, you, can be inspired by you, bro. You know, a lot of people, man, can take a page out of your book, man, and climb out of that 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 mental impoverishment they in, man. Climb out that whatever they poverty is, man. They can use your show and some of the pages out your book after listening to this podcast, you know, to be able to help them. You know, so I just, man, want to congratulate you, man, on, 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 on your redemption, man, on climbing out of that hole, man, and just making yourself into who you are today. You know what I'm saying? Because like I say, you only have so many people out here that's a ray of light, that's a beacon of light for others, to enhance others, to help others, to ameliorate others, to improve others. You know, and that's what you're doing, man. And you know, I want to take my hat off to you, man. And I want to tell you congratulations for what you're doing. But most of all, I want to tell you congratulations, man, for climbing out of that poverty situation that you was in. You know, and you're standing tall, you know, smiling, you're happy, you know what I'm saying? You got all your bodily functions, all your mental faculties together. <laughs> and, man, I'm going to just say, yeah. man, we're going to keep tuning in to you, man. Keep on watching you, man. Let you keep teaching us, man, our history. You know, and and, and 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 just you know, keep 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 uh just giving us your personality, man. So before we get out of here, well, man, give you, me social media, your last words, and and everything before we get out of here. Okay, y'all can find me on Facebook, William Brown. You can find my business page, the eighteen oh four show, chapter two, and Instagram, Dollar Wheel eighteen oh four. And just my last words, man, is the nightmare is. When you say it does, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but 
another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles. You can catch me on YouTube at Yacht Life Chronicles. You can catch me on Facebook at Four to Three Yacht Life, <laughs> and you can catch me on IG at Yacht, at Yacht Life Chronicles. Man, I want to thank Dollar Will for coming in, man. You know, just with his inspirational story, you know, man, you know, a uh, redemption story, man, just, you know, just having the endurance, man, to climb yourself out of any poverty situation, you know, and you can learn a lot from this guy. You, you guys make sure you tap into a show, 1804 show, and um, just, just support, you know, you know, we need that support from y'all. If y'all don't support us, then who will? At the end of the day, we got to right. support each other. Yep, so this is another edition of you, Life Chronicles where we are better together than separate. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. Peace.